So yeah. if you think about it from a marketing perspective, we have to write these messages with the reader in mind. The, the kind of basic template I use is like, while researching the music industry, your profile came up or mm -hmm. your business came up. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of setting the stage of how you came across them. So while I was doing research on the music industry, your profile came up and it looks like you're doing some fascinating things at this mm -hmm. company in this industry. I'd be curious to learn more about your work. Would you be open for a quick conversation? So super mm -hmm. short, make it about them and have a clear next step of what to do next. Hey, jump on a phone call. Because then in the phone mm -hmm. call, you could talk about how you just graduated and how you did social media for your school mm -hmm. and how you tripled the results and everything like that. Yeah. But if we try and say it all at once, we overwhelm the person and mm -hmm. they just literally don't know how to reply. Like that person's probably not sitting there going like, oh, let me go to the job boards and see if I can find something <laughs> yeah. for this guy. Right. They're yeah. probably going, oh my God, I'm late for a meeting. I've been up all night. I'm really mm -hmm. tired. Like they're, they're stressed out about their own stuff. So we got to kind of realize what state of mind they're in. And also uh -huh. if the, you know, the CEO or whoever it is, doesn't reach out, Go down a rung, go to the, you know, director, the VP, the manager, the, the junior manager, you know, find the person yeah. that will respond. I'll pause there. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? I like, I really like, I think that's very, very helpful, extremely helpful. But, and you're right about them reading a message like that and just be like, okay, like, I don't care. You know, like, I don't care. I'm, I'm Not even I don't now. care, but like, I don't have time. That's more yeah, so it. Exactly. It's like, it's like, oh, yeah. I mean, I might want to help this person, but I don't have time. Yeah. But if mm -hmm. you flatter them a little bit, they'll be like, oh, well, I want to feel flattered a little more. So <laughs> I have time, you know? Yeah. I like that though. It's, you know, uh, you're right about building the, trying to build the relationship first rather than, and just here's what I want. Um, but yeah. For sure. And then you can almost weave your project into it. Like, so that's entry level networking, messaging, setting up one on one meetings and things like that. Mm -hmm. But then there's the, you know, you keep going down that road. And this is sort of the, the journey I went through too. It's like start with professional organizations, then do one on ones, then get comfortable with one on ones, then lead groups. So I would start hosting my own events. Then eventually you get to a point where you're like, well, how can I connect with more people on a more regular basis? And, you know, the podcast has many reasons. There's many reasons why I do a podcast, but part of it is it's my kind of project that allows me to stay in touch with the community, coaches, mm. therapists, job seekers in a much more informal, but also formal way, right? Mm. Like if I just said, Hey, you want to get on a call for an hour to a VP of some place, it's a little harder to get them on the phone than if they want to be on a podcast episode or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But again, like these are, this is just one of many reasons to keep building your projects and keep putting yourself out there, right? Someone who yeah. is on the board of, you know, some music organization is going to have more opportunities to talk to people that work at these companies or someone who is mm -hmm. volunteering to host different cool events or in your case, building these playlists, or mm -hmm. maybe you build playlists like, and you, you reach out to the local musicians you're putting on the playlist and you talk to them a little bit and ask them who their managers are and who, what companies they're working with and things like that. So you can almost leverage the project that you're building yeah. into your networking and into your sort of strategy beyond just, I hope someone sees it to mm -hmm. how can I utilize it as a vehicle to get more connections. Even if I, if nothing happens with it, it's still my own little, little project. I, yeah. I can still do whatever I want with it. You put it on your resume. Um, you can put it in, exactly. you can talk about it in interviews for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I know, I love that you brought up like family ties because mm -hmm. I think that that's actually something people don't think about as much about how people get jobs, right? If you look mm -hmm. at job boards, you know, you mentioned you're not hearing back from job boards. Typically for entry level jobs, job boards have like a one to 4% response rate. So what that mm -hmm. means is like every hundred you send in, you should expect to hear back from one to, uh, you know, just a couple or a handful of them. Right. Yeah. And so the issue with that is that it's hard to send in a hundred applications via the internet into the black mm -hmm. hole of the job boards. And so people get really burnt out really fast, sort of what you mentioned. You, the first three months out of school, it was like just going at it hard. 
And then you're like, I'm not hearing back from this stuff and you start to burn out and it starts to, so that's why we got to find these sustainable things like the project that you've built and launched to like stay engaged over longer periods of time and remember why you love music as well, right? You don't want to lose sight of that. And then um, this networking approach of like sending that message that we just talked about, re retooling it and sending it out, that gets about like a 40% response rate. Hmm. And then, um, you know, the more engaging the thing is that you're doing, the higher the turnover or the higher the response is. And oh, yeah. so- one of my favorite examples of this, I was coaching someone once and they mentioned like, oh, I want to start getting involved with like um, uh, e-games, right? Um, am I saying that right? Esports. They want to e get involved in esports. And they're like, well, there's no esports in my area. There's no like meetups or anything. So I was like, let's create a meetup, see what happens. So he mm -hmm. created an esports meetup, like put it on meetup.com, like 40 people joined it because meetup.com shared it out with the community. And then because he had 40 people in the group, he goes, well, I guess I could reach out to some speakers and see if they'll speak. So he reached out to a VP at um, EA Sports and asked okay. if they wanted to speak at the event. And the VP couldn't do it, but he sent the director. And so the director okay. did it. Um, and then, so he puts on this event with these 40 people that like, you know, coding and esports and right. this person who works on the tech team at uh, EA sports. And mm -hmm. then he's kind of that connecting tissue that brought it all together. And it ends up being like, you know, they were talking internships by the end of the day. Right. And so mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, of like putting yourself in these situations to make these contacts, because mm -hmm. a lot of times people do get jobs from family and friends and friends of friends mm -hmm. and things like that. I think 80% of jobs are found through like knowing someone who works at the company. And so if we don't have those family connections, how do we get to know people at the company? Well, we got to put ourselves in those situations to get to know those people. So I love that you're already starting to kind of put these pieces together and put yourself out there in that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like, like you said, it's, it's more of like, what can, I do for them rather than what can they do for me? Exactly. They want to know what, what I'm doing and what I can bring, what, what skills and yeah. So what skills I can bring, you know? And that brings us to like, what is it that these companies are struggling with? Like, what are the core problems that they have? What do you think some, what do you think the typical problems that these companies have are on their marketing team, on their community engagement team? What do you think they're struggling with? I want to say, I for sure, I feel like it's like not interacting enough with their with their fan base. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just not connecting with them, just not just not relating relating to them. So engagement. Uh, yeah, engagement for sure. And engagement um, leads to what? So let's say you're running a business and mm -hmm. you're able to hire someone to improve the engagement between your business and your consumers what would that do for your business? It would bring more loyal, loyal customers. Exactly. It, bring, it, it, build, it builds a community, you know, um, with the, with the, when I was doing the social media for the student union at my school, it went from being completely dead to, to it being a, becoming like a community. It became, it became a place for students where we're very comfortable with, with sharing, anything with us even if it was like personal stuff even I remember one day uh, uh, a student had tweeted at us and said oh I just got I just aced my my last final or something like that and and then other people sharing you know their their achievements um and I I, I really love that that they they looked at us as like a as like a just a, a safe environment like a community where we're students like we're all students there like why can't we all just get along and interact with each other you know yeah um and i feel like that that's what a lot of uh companies especially major like bigger record labels and stuff like that in the music industry they they really lack engagement um mm -hmm. they just post something and they, that's it they post and go and that's yeah it. post and ghost as they say mm -hmm. um yeah. and that's and that's kind of the thing right like so 
that story that you just told is is one that you definitely should note down and tell in an interview, right? Of like how you created this community that really help people open up and engage and talk about things. And then you relate that back to the business's needs. It's not just that you did it, but it's that you know how to create spaces that foster that kind of conversation and community. And what that does for businesses, it helps them better understand their consumers and basically do market research. It helps them retain customers over longer periods of times Mm -hmm. and it helps them attract new customers because the word of mouth from all the community people talking will spread and so Mm -hmm. all of this becomes part of your value proposition in your job Mm -hmm. search and in the way that you talk about and market yourself 